The sundew is a small plant whose leaves form a rosette. It grows in boggy places and has all the parts of a normal plant. Here are three sundews quite close together. From the center of the rosette of leaves grows the flower stalk on which opens a number of small white flowers with a faint pink tinge. The flowers produce seeds in the ordinary way. This is a close view of one of the seeds. It is adapted to floating on water and being blown by the wind. But the sundew has unusual leaves. It is here that we see the abnormal method of nutrition. The opening out of this leaf is greatly speeded, of course. We'll look closely at it for a few moments. The leaf is reddish-green. It has many tentacles. Those on the margin of the leaf are longer than those in the central region. They are on the upper surface of the leaf only. The tentacles are covered with a sticky fluid, most thickly on the tips. It is with these tentacles that the sundew catches insects and then digests their proteins. This is what happens to a fly caught on the outer tentacles. It takes a few minutes before the insect is entirely covered and submerged in the sticky fluid. Here is an insect in the center of the leaf. Proteins from the body of the insect are digested. They add to those built up by the plant itself. In this way, the sundew adapts itself to growing on boggy, peaty soils, which do not provide enough nitrogen. Toadstool and mushroom are two well-known members of the family of plants called the fungi. Here we see the toadstool growing. The fungi are saprophytes. They grow from spores on decaying animal and vegetable matter. To give some idea of the size of the spores, the eye of a needle containing some of them is put under a microscope and moved across the screen. This is what the spores look like when magnified even more highly. These spores are living. In suitable conditions of warmth and moisture, they grow. They branch out many times, eventually to form a thin mat. From this mat, the fungus grows upwards. It has no roots, no leaves, no flowers and no seeds. It certainly is an abnormal plant. From the thin, matted tangle of living cells that developed from a spore, a mushroom grows. Its stalk is anchored to the ground by the mat and supports the umbrella. It absorbs food directly from the decaying organic matter. The umbrella of a mushroom may produce millions of spores. Each spore can produce a new mushroom. Yes, millions of spores. Let us take a section through the umbrella which contains a number of parts called gills. These gills hang like curtains from the top.
From this section, a very small portion is taken to be examined under the microscope. Here is a greatly enlarged diagram of what the microscope shows. The spores grow on the surface of the gill and when ripe are nipped off. They either fall to the ground or are blown away by the wind. In suitable conditions of warmth and moisture, the spores will grow. They are just beginning now. Those that fall on decaying animal or vegetable matter will have a chance of developing into new mushrooms. The dodder is a complete parasite which grows from seeds, each of which puts out a plumule but only a very feeble radical. It has no roots in the ground and only minute scale-like leaves. Here is a close view showing how a dodder seed germinates. The radical scarcely penetrates the soil. The plumule, after leaving the seed, waves about in the air until it either finds a host or dies. If it is successful, it encircles its host and its suckers penetrate the stem. How this encircling movement is governed, we do not yet understand. Once the shoot has a grip on the host, the dodder loses all contact with the ground. Its method of feeding, therefore, is abnormal. At intervals on the dodder stem, where it is in contact with the host, suckers begin to form. In this view, the dodder stem has been unwound to reveal the little pads from which the suckers will grow. This is a closer view of one of the pads. And here is a cross-section of the host's stem with the encircling dodder. Watch the suckers grow inwards. They penetrate the stem to the phloem, drawing from the host already built up nourishment and water. This, of course, affects the growth of the host. These six plants are all the same age. The two plants in the center were attacked by the dodder, while the outside pairs were not. The dodder grows very quickly. It needs no green leaves to build up food. It shoots branch out, and quite soon the host may be partly hidden. We will show five hours growth, very much speeded up. If you watch the minute hand of this clock and one of the dodder stems, you will see how much it moves in an hour. It certainly grows rapidly. The dodder has small pink flowers which produce seeds. One cluster of flowers can be seen near the top right of the picture. These flowers open out and are very beautiful. Fertilization is normal. Many seeds are produced. Next year, some of these seeds, here is a close view of two of them, will germinate and seek new hosts from which to take their food. <laughs>